Metabolism is the process of taking in nutrients, breaking them down, and sending them to where they need to go in the body. When we refer to a broken metabolism, we're talking about a metabolism that's not functioning properly. Signs of this include difficulty losing weight, frequent energy crashes throughout the day, brain fog, trouble sleeping, and mood swings, to name a few. And this damage can come from a few different factors. For example, if you restrict calories for a prolonged period of time, this can damage your metabolism and actually slow it down. Undiagnosed insulin resistance is another example. This is when the cells in your body are not taking in energy as they should. Or a broken metabolism can be due to hormonal issues, such as an underactive thyroid, which also causes your metabolism to slow down. So what can you do if your metabolism isn't functioning properly? Here are three steps you can take to get your metabolism back in shape. Number one is to give yourself eight hours of sleep opportunity. I know we are all tired of hearing about how important sleep is, but trust me, this has to be the first step. When we don't get enough quality sleep, even for just one night, our hormones and specifically the ones that are involved in our metabolism don't function properly. After just one night of subpar sleep, ghrelin, the hunger hormone increases, leptin, the satiety hormone decreases, cortisol, the stress hormone increases, and insulin is elevated as well. And these changes occur even in people who are metabolically healthy. And like I mentioned a couple of times, this is after just one night of poor sleep. Imagine what is happening if you're not getting proper sleep on a consistent basis. Now, of course, ghrelin being high and leptin being low mean that you're going to be hungrier throughout the day, which isn't ideal, but it's the elevated cortisol and insulin that are a bigger concern. In healthy individuals, insulin is only elevated after they have eaten. Insulin's role is to take the energy from that meal to the cells in the body where it is needed. And because of this role, insulin is known as the fat storage hormone. When insulin is high, that means we have energy from our food that has just come into the body. But when we haven't eaten for a while, then insulin isn't needed and it drops. And this drop in insulin means that our body has to tap into our stored energy, aka our fat stores, to fuel us, which is all normal and healthy. However, as I just mentioned, when we don't sleep well, our insulin remains high. So our body thinks there's energy available and it continues to store fat. People who are insulin resistant have elevated insulin around the clock, and this is why they find it so difficult to lose weight, even if they're restricting calories. And if you aren't sleeping well, you're only making insulin resistance worse. You really can't fix your metabolism unless your sleep is on point, which is why it is so important to give yourself at least eight hours of sleep opportunity every night. And by this, I mean have your phone off and out of the room and give yourself eight hours of uninterrupted time when you can sleep. Having a consistent sleep and wake time is also key. I have other videos on my channel if sleep is something you struggle with, so you can check those out afterwards. But I can't emphasize enough how important this step is. Number two is 30 grams of protein at every meal. Protein is the most important macronutrient, and yet most of us are under consuming it. A higher protein intake actually boosts our metabolism, increasing the amount of calories we burn each day. But beyond that, it's needed to create digestive enzymes and hormones. It helps us to move essential molecules around the body. And of course, it's important for maintaining and building lean muscle mass. And this is extra important as we age because we require more protein to maintain lean muscle mass as we get older. Another reason that protein is important for metabolism is the role it plays in satiety. Because protein is so important, we will remain hungry until our protein needs are met. And this is why it is so easy to overconsume foods that are high in carbs but have very little protein, things such as potato chips or french fries. We can continue to pick at these long after our energy needs are met because we haven't hit our protein requirement. Now, I recommend that everyone start out by aiming for 30 grams of protein at every meal because most people aren't even hitting this, but ideally you really want to be shooting for 40 to 50 grams. I always recommend animal protein as the first option. One of the reasons being is because it's more bioavailable than plant sources are, but also it's generally very low in carbs. Most animal protein has no carbs or next to no carbs 
and it usually comes with a good amount of fat, which is also important for our metabolism. Now, if you're in Australia like I am, I highly recommend buying your meat from Butchercraft. Butchercraft delivers 100% grass-fed and finished beef and lamb, pasture-raised chicken and pork, and wild-caught seafood straight to your door. They have several boxes to choose from and also the option to customize your own. And with the option to change, pause, or cancel your subscription at any time, there really is no reason to not give them a try. Click the link in the description box down below to check out their products and build your box and make sure to use code HCK15 at checkout and you'll save 15% off your first box. And finally, number one is to be smart about your carbs. Generally, when our metabolism isn't functioning properly, the number one nutrient that it's having trouble with is carbohydrates. Now, I'm not saying you have to cut carbs out of your diet entirely. Yes, reducing them can be a very effective strategy and help you to repair your metabolism faster. However, even just being smart about carbs can have a huge impact. And when I say to be smart about carbs, here are some examples of how to do that. Number one is don't eat your carbs naked. And by this I mean don't eat carb-rich foods on their own. Always pair them with protein and fat. This will help to slow down digestion and give your body more time to process them. It also means less of a spike in blood sugar, which means more consistent energy and fewer mood swings and fewer cravings. The second way to be smart about carbs is to limit them at breakfast. When we eat carbs on an empty stomach, they're digested rapidly and cause a big spike in blood sugar. So save them until later in the day. Instead, for breakfast, opt for things such as eggs, smoked salmon, avocados, Greek yogurt, bacon without sugar is another good option, non-starchy vegetables. Some combination of these foods is going to help a lot. And the third way to be smart about carbs is if you know you are going to be eating a lot of them or if you're going to indulge, have apple cider vinegar beforehand. Vinegar helps to slow down the digestion of carbs and improves insulin sensitivity. If you have one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar diluted in water before your meal, this will slow down digestion and reduce the blood sugar and insulin spike. And those are three steps to improving a broken metabolism. Let me know in the comment section down below which of these steps is going to be most challenging for you. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section and if I can help you out there, I will. And again, before you go, if you're in Australia, make sure to check out Butcher Crowd. The link's gonna be in the description box down below. Thanks guys for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.